Welcome everyone to Kim Spearman. We'll call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone. We'll start as usual with a prayer led by Pastor Ayers and followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for your love and your grace. Lord, I pray that you continue to give us wisdom and guidance. Lord, I do pray for our city council uh, that um, they look towards you and they lead our uh, village um, each and every day. Lord, again, I just thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Baker? Yep. Bassett? Here. Jones? Here. Bridgeway? Yes. Beverly? Here. Here. You have the minutes from the regular February 4th council meeting minutes in your packet. Are there any additions or corrections? <coughs> I move we approve the minutes okay. as written. Roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Bridgeway? Yes. You have the approved bills list in your packet. Are there any questions? Mm hmm. Who else do we need? Uh, on the uh, back side of the first page. Configuration and Calibration Services LLC 777.72. What's that for, Kent? Those are some of the meters down at the sewer plant. Not the flow meters. Not the flow some meters. Some of no. the plant meters. Okay. I think of the names right off. They get calibrated once a year. Okay. I just thought we were paying to calibrate meters that I didn't want us to have to start with. Okay. That is the only question I had in there. Thank you. I just have one uh, second page. They one down the... 19985 H&W uh, Automotive says annual fee. Sorry, I asked her one uh, meeting. <laughs> I to have a credit there pay $39 a year. Okay. For what? Have to have a credit account there. Are you kidding me? Is that something new? Hmm. I never did. I'm good by a lot of stuff there. Hmm. Are you sure it's not for like? Do we have settling tanks? Yeah. Do you have torsion okay. settling? Sure yeah, but that usually comes when we swap the tank, though. It says That's more than thirty. Now. It says right on the statement annual fee. Because I just got one personally said annual fee, and we called about it. And it was for the settling tank that used to be out. Might be worth calling. To make sure. That's all I got. I have a quick question. Uh, first page, about five down. And any source, it was a conference fee, I believe? No, no, it's below that. Check below to the left. Go on one below. Uh, bottom, bottom left of it, and a source. Okay. That's the purpose of it. Got it. Any other questions? If nobody has anything else, I move we pay the bills. I'll second it. Roll call. Mark. Abstain. Beverly. Yes. Ridgeway. Yes. Jones. Yes. Bassett. Yes. Baker. Yep. Okay, well, I, would I would like to um, invite Pastor Steve Irish to the podium to speak to council tonight. I just like to touch on our, oh, I guess our processing plan. Is that what we're calling our processing plan? That's requested to have medical marijuana or possibly see how we feel about that. And I wanted to start off with just to make sure that you guys know that I support you. I support the village of Hicksville. That I hope that we grow and we prosper and the village is a better place to live. And that's my goal to, to support you guys. Um, I've spent... Um, last two weeks trying to educate myself about medical marijuana 
And I guess the only thing that I could tell you that I can give you a stack of documentations that says medical marijuana does a tremendous job for all kinds of different things. And I can stack up another same size uh, stack of documentation that says it doesn't do what all the claims that it says. So I guess my only conclusion that I came to as I looked and I read is that um, the jury's still out. That uh, medical marijuana, that there's still not some real solid documentation and some testing on whether medical marijuana does the things that it claims that it does. Matter of fact, the only thing I did find out is that the FDA, medical marijuana is not on the approved list of drugs for the Federal Department, Federal Drug Administration, not the FDA. That's about the only thing I did find out that's, um, that's true. But I think, I think we need to take the long-term approach or at least a long-term look at this issue. I think we need to look down the road as far as we can. I think we need to educate ourselves and do our due diligence uh, with this issue because I truly believe if we open the door, um, it's going to be very, very difficult to close. I think maybe we should talk to other um, cities and see how they're handling it. We should talk to uh, maybe our representatives down in Columbus and see uh, how, what they uh, uh, suggest that we do and how we handle this um, uh, situation and this issue. Now, I got a chance to talk with uh, Sean O'Donnell, uh, the city law director there in Defiance and our own Troy Exix, and um, they really confirmed what I really thought that, well, I'm just going to say it, that I really think that medical marijuana is a prerequisite for recreational marijuana. As we look across the states of, of the ones that have recreational marijuana, medical marijuana preceded them all. And, and again, I think we need to take sure we make sure we're looking down the road and having a long-term view of this issue and make sure we have all the information that we possibly can have. Um, you might say it's going to be more jobs. Well, I think the city has decided that um, in the past that um, an adult bookstore is not the jobs that we wanted here in Hicksville. I think the city in the past has decided that um, Spice was not a place that we needed uh, jobs for in the city of Hicksville. So jobs and, and income is not, is not always uh, the right answer that we want to see. So I guess, again, I strongly urge our council to take some real time to take a look and contact our state representatives. And um, Troy can correct me if I'm wrong, but I really do believe that um, we can make legislation here in the, the city of Hicksville to uh, not have medical marijuana or, looking down the road, recreational marijuana coming in. You might say it's coming. Well, you can almost say it's here. But that doesn't mean we don't have to, we can stand our ground and not allow it here in the village of Hicksville. I uh, thank you for your time. Again, I support uh, the city council here in the village of Hicksville because we're going to move forward with our village. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Can I touch on that just a little bit, Mary? Yes. Has anybody talked to that company to send us the letter? What'd you come up with? I emailed them and she responded the very next day saying, if you go to the botanica.usa or us and you can go to their website and look at all the products they have which are different types of flavored uh, gums and gummies and candies and see if I pull up the email so I asked her for uh, references of other villages and towns I told her we had a meeting <coughs> last night we had a topic of having medical marijuana business in our town one of the council's thoughts and legal questions for our solicitor are you able to provide me with some references of villages and towns that you currently have up and running, uh, other biz facilities and businesses that are up and running. Uh, like the emails you had with our zoning inspector, that, that this is some red flags. And uh, I'm not saying I'm opposed to it, but I'm uh, I'm glad you, your business, you described it, cultivate or grow marijuana and or retail sell medical drugs at that facility. Just doing some research before I vote one way or the other. And she responded by saying, Right now we have a dispensary and cultivation facility in Tucson, Arizona. We have been in operation since August 2013. You can find us on Google and various other platforms under the name Botanica. Feel free to contact the Arizona Department of Health to inquire about our biannual inspection records as well. Please let me know if you need anything else. That was it. I also emailed back and forth with her quite a little bit, but I only copied the last. The, the rest of it's on my phone, which I did not bring in here because we're not supposed to have phones. <laughs> 
In, you, in, all my, website. in all my conversations, I talked directly with Aaron Polinger, mm -hmm. and uh, she said, at this time, we're not actively looking for a location. We are researching which counties, townships allow medical marijuana production sites, and then they'll move on from there. Uh, I also uh, spoke with uh, <coughs> the uh, directors over in Paulding County, uh, because they happened to be over there at the restaurant eating when they walked in. And uh, years ago, Judge Burkhardt, he passed, while well, he sat on the bench, he passed a thing that all counties, or excuse me, all townships in Paulding County cannot do any of this. <coughs> That's, it's already been done. And, and, uh, and they were also, they, you know, this company checked with Paulding and Paulding County, and uh, I think they're checking with everybody. They're just trying to find somebody that's going to let them in. Uh, and in, in all my conversations uh, with everybody that I spoke with, I think, uh, and the Reverend said, you know, we need to take a look, good, long, hard look at this down the road. <clears throat> I think if you're going to do something, you better do it soon. If you're going to pass legislation that says this is not going to happen in Hicksville and or Hicksville Township, you better do it soon because the wheel is turning faster than what we're moving. And that's all I got. Is it, is it, marijuana is still a federal, illegal federal, correct? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. So, so what jurisdiction do we have to counter a federal law? No, no, I'm not saying no, we agree I, with it. Yeah, we well, disagree. We yeah, don't allow yeah, it. No, no, I'm just saying because if we do allow it, under what jurisdiction would are we? Well, it's not that we allow it. It's already allowed. The state's done that. Okay. The state of Ohio has done that, but they've allowed each village, city, township, municipality to basically on their own decide if you don't want it in your jurisdiction you can pass legislation and it's typically or, or where it comes is it's in the form of like zoning basically that say none of the following institutions are permitted you know within the village limits and you cover all the you can call it, cover as many or all of what you want but um, they're basically three operations there's what you would call the growing operation <clears throat> and then the operation like this is where they take the raw marijuana and make it into other products and then you got the people that get it to the end user, the dispensaries. Um, and I think that Ron, or maybe what Eric said, um, that they operate a dispensary in Arizona. I think that's, and I'm just speaking generally, what's always been one of the concerns for the people that are passing legislation to avoid it is, I'll say it is maybe my own opinion, but it's not because I've talked to a lot of people involved in it, is the medical marijuana thing in Ohio is a front basically to get towards recreational marijuana. Nobody can deny that. You talk to your representative, your senator, your state people, they will tell you what happened was they were pushing to get a constitutional amendment to permit recreational marijuana in Ohio, the, the lobby, whoever it is. And in order to head that off for a little bit longer, the legislators scrambled to get something put together that would appease some people to get them to back off, basically. But I think everybody would say that that was the whole intent was, like Reverend Iris said, once you get in the medical, and then you start working on the recreational, and that's the way Colorado, Michigan, all those places are, are heading. So, I mean, there's, I mean that, that's not really a pretend. And the fact that they're already dispensary, the people that are in the know, what they'd say is, yeah, they may have a, uh, a facility out here that's not that, but then the second something passes, it's recreational. There's going to be a storefront in that town because they already got the stuff here. You know, why wouldn't they be dumb not to open it there? Um, but the law is already in place that permits it. Now, if they were to go, if either the legislature or the voters were to approve recreational, then whatever we do on the medical front, unless they put a similar provision in the new law, basically would be a non-issue at that point down the road. So to answer one of the pastor's questions, we can't do anything about the recreational marijuana because it's not allowed right now anyway. But the, from the medical side, we can pass legislation 
unequivocally 100% to say it's not, you know, the dispensary, the grow operation, the manufacturing facility is not permitted um, in here. And like I said, a lot of a lot of states still don't allow it. Some states do. Still illegal under federal law. Marijuana is a, what they call a scheduled drug under the you know the Food and Drug Administration. So um, that's always the catch-22. And we talked the last time about a lot of the incidental things that raises like the banking issue they got nowhere to put their money um, matter of fact I was told by a friend that's in the banking business that they've all had meetings at the banks and stuff about what happens if it does get recreational in Ohio because they got basically several tiers of people that they won't do business with first of all the companies themselves because of the federal law issue but then you get down underneath it the people that maybe supply them other materials and stuff like that they may have to stop doing business with them ultimately all the way down to people like their accountants and their lawyers that they that they'll be on the list of people because they're affiliated with them that they can't do business so it, it does create a messy scenario from a banking standpoint but i think um Again, I was involved in the stuff that they did in Defiance, and my concern has always been, and I said this a hundred times, everybody that even recreationally uses marijuana doesn't turn into like a heroin addict. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to say that. There are people that use it just like a lot of people drink beer, drink wine or whatever, but if you look at the studies and you talk to the people that uh, the two classes of people the people that do have serious drug problems you would be hard pressed to find somebody that's a heroin or a methamphetamine addict that didn't start by smoking marijuana now some of them maybe had prescription drug issues because they had an injury but by and large most of them started that's why it's known as a gateway drug and so your concern is that you know some of the, this will increase some of that the other thing and i think i sent the email to diane but i don't know if anybody else saw it there was an article that was actually forwarded to me that was about one of the better ones that i've read by somebody that's qualified that's done the research and there is a link to even long-term marijuana use medically or not a link to increase in mental illness and violent behavior and so that's always a concern I you know making that easier what's it what's it going to be down the road and I think in actually a more interesting part of that that I found is and I did a little more research on it my own they're basically suggesting that part of the reason that the <coughs> cannabis lobby has been so successful is they've been the one that's been pushing the opiate to the media and stuff like that about how bad, not that it's not bad and we'd all say it's bad, but they've been trying to get that out in front while they ride behind getting everything passed in the back. It's actually pretty smart if you're looking at it from a lobbyist standpoint. It's kind of the old bait and switch or you know deflect and whatever, but they've been the one pushing that issue. And so that concerns me a little bit in that some of the studies they're citing and, and, and like the pastor said, you can find, you know, we could have a stack this high. This one says all the benefits. This one says, by reputable people that have a lot more schooling than any of us in here and they they say the exact opposite oh that's not proven by whatever they studied so that's that's my concern and from the law enforcement angle and i know the chief spoke to that the last time you know i obviously prosecute a lot of people for a lot of different things and uh you know possession of marijuana is way down the level but a lot of the other stuff that i deal with the violent stuff even stuff as frequent as like driving under suspension and things like that, a lot of that is generated either by drug usage or, quite frankly, mental illness. Um, and so it's, you know, how do you try and slow down some of that trend or whatever? But it's, you know, it's, it's out there and, and, you know, probably in the not too distant future, probably going to be faced again with the recreational aspect of it. But again, that doesn't mean that we as a community. The other thing I can say over in Defiance that they were concerned about, at least some of the council people and others expressed some concern about is, yeah, 20 jobs or whatever would be great, but 
if we do that for 20 jobs, you run the risk of some other, and obviously it's the bird in the hand, you know, deal, but you run the risk of somebody saying, well, we don't want to go into a place where there's, you know, they've permitted marijuana type facilities because even though they're not selling or doing whatever, we don't want employees that are potentially under the influence. That's the other angle on it all is still illegal in federal law. Most companies will still, that do drug testing, they'll still say in their policies, even if you got a prescription, if we test you and you test positive, you're gone. Mm -hmm. And um, I know my, my wife's employer is headquartered in Colorado, and when they go to their corporate things and they have meetings, <laughs> that's one of the first ones, like, hey, we don't care if it's legal in Colorado. If you get tested and they do random testing, they do whatever, the first time, you're gone. I don't care if you got a prescription or not. So, and it's recreationally allowed there now. So, um, it does create a lot of uh, more concern, or at least things to think about from the community. And I guess from a procedural standpoint, what I would say is, if somebody is interested in bringing it to a vote, for lack of a better term, all somebody would have to do is direct me to bring the legislation um, for lack of a better term, for the ban, and then we, you know, would have three more readings. And well, I think we need to do that. In, input, and then everybody can study it, and everybody can vote where they want to vote. I, I know people, I mean, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, I, I know people that smoke marijuana. Uh, I, I don't get too excited yeah. about it. It doesn't bother Same me. Way. But when I think, uh, I want my grandson smoking it, and, uh, and so if all we have to do is, is sit here tonight and, and prepare you to prepare us uh, an ordinance that says that uh, we're not going to allow it in this village, that's fine. And I think we should do that. Uh, if 10 years down the road, uh, Newville allowed one in, and, and now Newville's got a, a turnpike going through it, six colleges, and 11,000 people live there. Maybe we'll take another look at it. But at this point in time, I would like to have you bring back legislation that says we're not going to do it. Okay. I, I just want to read one thing because on what Troy is talking about on the mental illness, I believe it was Alex Berenson that wrote the article. He was a graduate of Yale University. Would you go to the podium, please, Chief? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he reports that cannabis users today are also consuming a drug that is far more potent than they ever had before. It's measurable at Thank you. the THC level. All right, back in the 70s, uh, the THC level was about 2.5%. Uh, was less than 2% THC and back then. Now today, because of the farming, uh, the sophisticated farming and the cloning techniques, uh, it's about 20 to 25% higher on the THC level. Uh, so, so they use this, you know, use, they prefer extracts and they're nearly pure THC and that's part of the issue. I mean, you know, because your THC levels are much higher than they were back in the 60s and the 70s, all right? And like I said, all the articles will read, it's a, it's a way to try to promote and bring on recreational use. And most of the articles I've read, they've all read the same thing. It's a prerequisite that they're trying to get to the recreational use, so. And this talks a lot. I think I forwarded this mm -hmm. to you folks on the mental illness. So uh, when it comes to the paranoia, how much it causes paranoia. So, and then when you, you know, in dealing with drug arrest, and when you actually talk to some of these offenders, if they're quite honest with you, they will tell you that their drug usage increased or they started out with marijuana and using marijuana excessively, and that increased them to start trying other drugs. Okay, so so if you actually sit down and talk with someone that's been in the drug culture or has been arrested several times, you know, they will tell you that they started out on marijuana and it just kept increasing. So, and again, as long as it's federally prohibited, I think it's a wise move that we do 
make a, a rule that's not allowed here. I realize it's going to bring jobs, but I'm also worried about the clientele that will also bring to the village that's going to live here. Thank you. So, you well, we have a request. Motion? Well, no, but Troy has the word to yeah. go ahead and prepare okay. it, so we'll have him bring it back. Nope. We'll have him bring it back to the next meeting. I think we need a vote to see who doesn't agree with me. You've asked Make me to bring it past the want. process. <laughs> <laughs> the process. So we vote. Then you'll do the three readings and people can do their research and then they can... Better to vote before you spend all that time writing it up. <laughs> Let's move on. Hey, we're going on to boards and commissions. There were no uh, minutes in the packets. Uh, and then going on to council committee reports, there were no minutes in the packet. Are there any committees of council that want to report anything for your committees? Okay. Oh, Modern. oh sorry. No, go ahead. You uh, said something about the tanker truck. Yeah, we had to put new tires on the back. I'm bringing it to my republic. Okay. Water of Sewers having a meeting this Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Um, looking at work with an engineer and a couple of property owners about a well site uh, for another um, well in the community. And then we're updating our committee and everybody with uh, projects we have going on in the community, moving them forward. Okay. Thank you. Administrator's report. Just a, I had two things. I can't remember one of them. I didn't write it down. Uh, <laughs> Marijuana will do <laughs> No, that's not my problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> On the limbs. Uh, people don't need to call. We know they're going to have limbs out. We're probably going to be out for several weeks getting them. People are just going to have to have some patience. We do have some other things that have popped up that need done as well. So we just get stuff out to the edge of the road. But um, we are asking just for storm damage stuff, uh, bushes and some other things that people are hoping that we'll just get rid of since we're being nice guys. Uh, I don't think that's storm damage. Or if you go out and prune a tree, that's not storm damage. Um, so you know, stuff that's pretty obvious, yeah, get out to the edge of the road, we'll get it. It's going to take a little bit of time. And I do have a message in to the local tree trimmer uh, to see when they could spend a couple days getting things we can't reach, uh, some things off some wires, stuff like that. That's primarily going to be easement trees. They're not going to be doing private property trees. Um, so it'll take time, but we'll get get to it. Oh, I guess the other things that we got studied was in your packet. I'm sure you won't do anything, so... No, do you want to do anything? <laughs> Don't you want to do anything? The only thing I'd like to see is <laughs> I'm not picking on police department. <laughs> These people that make their own two lanes there on North Main when you come up past Farmers Merchants and they want to turn right and somebody else wants to go straight, they just create a lane. And the same thing out here when you're on West High. At all the intersections. Yeah. Well, I know. They just make their own traffic. Been that way since I was a child. They do it at McDonald's. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just saying. So that's got nothing to do with parking order. It's just, and that parking thing will show you people don't know how to drive. 99% of the accidents are clear weather and dry conditions. Mm -hmm. on there. My thought to the ODOT letters, if they want to do something in Hicksville, why don't they do something to the North Main Street Bridge? And that was my reply to Kent. Is oh, the fire. That's a railroad. Well, that's yeah, but that's on o that's number 17 on o that's Ohio on Department of Transportation's problem area. So why don't we just reply to them and say, look, we don't have room for anything there. Why don't you look at the North Main Street right up? Well, they're not ordering us to do anything. But this is the second time in five years they've given you this thing. I think they're just strongly hinting that you do something. <laughs> yes. uh, I, I don't care. You saw gone in Main Street. Needs to be a different That's why I'd like to fix the North Main viaduct and get rid of that truck detour. But I don't think it'll happen. But you wouldn't have to deal with the, the railroad to get those, the, the, to have them fix it like they did this one? I yeah. Think. Even if ODOT was in favor of doing it, you still got to deal with CSA. Right. But 
first step would be get no doubt on board and they just never responded to letters I've sent them in the past. It helped them out, it helped CSX out, but maybe maybe a Diane has a wonderful uh, thing there to email them back, or call them, say, hey boys, let's forget about this plan and let's let's do something about that vida. I remember when I when I met with ODOT about issues in front of the school, and they they talked about they didn't have so many accidents at that one compared to the Viaduct, but it still wasn't a high priority on, on their list because a lot of places in Ohio they have a lot more accidents than what we have here at the train tracks. Okay. Uh, injury accidents yeah. slash fatalities as yep. opposed to property damage. Anything else, guys? No. All right. Do we have, uh, Troy, do you have anything to report? Nothing on the agenda for you? No. All right. We'll have you bring that legislation back to the next meeting then. Right. Uh, Police Chief, do you have a report you'd like to give? No, I'm good. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Fire Chief? Make me the bad guy and take time. <laughs> I don't have a lot. Um, like Larry mentioned, I sent him a quick text that we had to put tires on the tanker. The ones that were on there were the original. We only replaced four of the four drive tires at this time. Uh, chunks of rubber were coming out of them. So they were 22 years old to begin with. So, um, NFPA standards, 10 years on tires. We, we just go till we can't go. Uh, I'd rather change them now. They've got plenty of tread on them, look like they're new, but the rubber just breaks down and they, they come apart. Uh, this Saturday we're having a JAWS training event. Um, if anybody likes to come, we're going to bring the battery-operated tool in and try that out. It'll be at 9.30 at the station. And we have our first raffle tickets left for Saturday. March 9th we have a breakfast. I'll bring that up again at the next meeting. I have purchased LED lights to go on the outside of the building. <coughs> I haven't got them on yet. And you'll probably see them bills, some smaller bills coming through. Uh, the ladies' auxiliary bought an ice machine for us. We're doing plumbing and electrical on that. We got some electrical that we have to do for a new washing machine we got on Grant. And we're trying to do all that work ourselves to save money. As far as EMS, I know John has applied for the state grant. It'll be about seven, eight thousand dollars we can use for training or equipment. We usually get that every year, so. Hopefully we do the same this year. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I do have one thing to report. <laughs> you pass. Got to wait till next time. So, March radios. These are the new portables that we just got. Our March radio system. Uh, we just put them in service today. I think they started using a couple of them over the weekend. The wireless. Uh, Mike and the portables. Uh, the police department are getting four mobile radios for the cars, and then they will have each have four repeaters in the car for us to be able to operate off of. Uh, so, because of where we're located and how far away we are from a repeater or a tower, uh, we're getting them first. Uh, before anyone else, but I think the sheriff's office is getting as they build their new cars, they'll be putting the mobiles in those in their new cars. So, so that's all I had. Thank you. And since he brought that up, ours are ordered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Val sent me a message today, it said she didn't have anything for council tonight, but uh, they're in the process of hiring and rehiring lifeguards for the pool for the summer. So we will go on to the fiscal officer's report. You have your fund status and cash summary report. Cash summary is when it's folded because it's legal size. Um, you have a new contact list and if it doesn't have the date of 215 at the bottom then it's not good because I have extra fund numbers on it. <laughs> Did you say a contact list? Uh -huh. Is it in your packet? Mm -hmm. I have one. I, have one. Mm -hmm. I think yours is in your mailbox. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, you have the January Mayor's Court Report and the Police, Re Police Department Report for their collection. 
Did anybody have any questions about the purchase order list? Okay. Should we? Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, Excuse I think you requested it because you wanted to see purchase orders written, so I just Correct. wondered if anybody had any questions about any of them written. No. Okay. Well, I do not have anything under my report. We have a gentleman in the back. Is he still? Would you want to? Do you want to address council about anything? No, I'm just here to listen. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Well, I guess there is one thing I added to my packet. I saw my email today, and it's like, um, this happened last year too. The residents got a random letter from a place called American Resources of Ohio and it was addressed right to the resident with their name and address in this case the one I have in front of me and it says a response is requested by 33119 and it is a, it's a repair responsibility advisory and I remember discussing this last year that it was sent out people might think that it's from the village of Hicksville but it's not um, they want you to buy into a water line protection program. That is not from the that is not from the village of Hicksville, so you not need to reply. I'll make motion to adjourn. Real quick, I got one more. No. Oh. 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 <laughs> nice try, Eric. Just an update here. Uh, Artesian uh, Pioneer the company is looking at uh, providing water to their east. Uh, EPA sent out a public notice. It's in many, many newspapers. Present, Fulton County Expositor, The Courier, Northwest Signal, Toledo Blade, Public Progress, Brian Pines, and Sinel. Central Tribune um, came out on the 12th, I believe, February 12th in their papers. But the EPA is having a public meeting in regards to this application um, on March 12th. It's at the Fayette Local Schools. In Fayette, Ohio, it starts at 6 o'clock. So people that are interested in that uh, situation, what they're planning on wanting to do with uh, at that facility, at that site. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> Roll call. <laughs> Baker. Yes. Marth. Yes. Jones. Yes. Ridgeway. Yes. Beverly. That's it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.